Hey, it's Dean DiMarzo here on Dean Talks Music, making you a better music producer today. And today we're taking a look at the fascinating vocal synthesizer, Clev Grand's Pipa. Clev Grand is a Swedish plugin manufacturer that makes all kinds of interesting audio plugins and synthesizers, the latest of which is Pipa, which is kind of a combination wavetable and granular synthesizer that uses a bunch of really tiny samples of the human voice to synthesize and create all kinds of new and interesting sounds. So we're going to go through the interface step by step, cover all the functions and controls of this, and then we'll play around with it a little bit and make a short song using it. So Pipa has a lot of the functions of most synthesizers that you may have come across. It has an envelope section to control the attack, decay, sustain, and release of the sound, uh, as well as the pitch, dynamics, and the vowel, which we'll cover these last two in a moment. It also has an LFO that can be applied to each of these four parameters differently. Uh, so it's actually four different LFOs. It's got controls for the vocal synthesis portion of the sound. And then it's got some basic reverb effects over here on the right. There's also a setup menu where you can get into deeper detail about the controls. We're going to start by talking about some of the voice controls, uh, starting with the vowel and dynamic sliders. I'm going to jump over to this plain oscillator setting uh, so we can start from absolute scratch. You can hear what the raw tone of this synthesizer sounds like. And we're going to go through these controls one by one. Let's start with the vowel slider. The vowel slider affects the formant of the sound, uh, and that means the wow, like that kind of part of the sound. Let's listen to that as I slide it back and forth. And this sets the starting point of your synthesizer's sound. Dynamics is a little harder to explain. It's not quite just volume. It's more about how the human voice reacts to singing louder or softer. If you think about singing softly, the voice isn't as rich as when you're belting out a big note. So sliding the dynamic slider up increases the richness of the sound. Take a listen. And you can just hear how much expression can be made from just those two sliders. We're going to be sort of playing these sliders with the envelope that we'll check out in a moment. I'm going to open up the dynamics and the vowel just a little bit so we can hear a little bit more of the sound. And we're going to play around with these three sliders, body, nose, and air. Body is the more fundamental part of the voice. Uh, nose will be the nasal kind of high mid frequencies. And air is like a really airy, almost noise uh, portion of the sound. Let's take a listen to these one at a time. Here's just body. Just nose. Hear how thin that sounds, the high mids. And finally, just air. Really tinny, high frequencies. Let's bring them all back into a nice balance. Let's jump over next to this voices section. Uh, and we have a couple controls here. First is whether we want just a solo voice or a group of voices. And we can hear the difference a little bit if we switch between them. Here's just a voice and voices. Now, it doesn't sound different just yet. We're going to increase a little bit of randomness between them. Some more fluctuation. Almost adding a chorus effect. And finally, we're going to jump over here to the width, spatial width. That's going to move those voices to the left and right sides of your ears as I play this. You can hear how much wider that gets as I open that up. There's a few different options here that all sound just slightly different. I like dubbing pan the best. It sounds the most natural to me. And finally, we have this mixed male or female setting for the voices. This just selects the collection of samples that it's using to generate the sound you're hearing. Uh, the male voices are going to sound more natural in the lower range. The female voices are going to sound more natural in the higher range. And the mixed setting blends between them as you move up and down the keyboard to keep it always sounding natural. So you can hear the mixed voices as I go through. Let's hear just the male voice going up that same arpeggio. You can hear it sounds really strange, unnatural, and pitch shifted as it moves up there. Similarly, the female voice moving down the spectrum. The female voice sounds very strange and unnatural when shifted into this register as well. 
compared to the male voice. That sounds a lot more natural. It doesn't mean it sounds bad. You can get some really cool sounds. It's just not going to sound like a traditional choir. So the mix setting will always give you a straightforward, realistic sound. Now, human voices do not stop and start as quickly as this, right? That's physically impossible. That is what the envelope section is for. This is where we get to introduce that humanity to the vocal sound. Now, this isn't quite set up like a traditional synthesizer. There's no attack or decay or sustain or release knobs. Uh, instead, we're kind of drawing a graph here of what we want the sound to do over the course of its time. If you've ever used Serum or uh, FM8 by Native Instruments, uh, this is sort of how their envelope is set up. There's a few things that are particular to this envelope that kind of messed with me as I started using it. So I'm going to show you exactly how I use it start to finish. This first dot on the left here is your attack. As you drag it left to right, it'll increase the amount of time it takes for the note to start. So here's no attack at all. Here's a bit of attack. And here's a lot of attack, a long time. Now this curve here, this affects this exponential curve here of this attack. Uh, you can make it really take its time getting up there. Or get up there early on and then have kind of diminishing returns as you go. So between these two settings, you can choose how long your note takes to start. Let's set it to kind of a natural short time here. Maybe a little bit shorter. At the other side, we have the release, how long it takes after your fingers leave the keys for this note to stop. So here's a bit of a long release. I'm going to set that back to something relatively short as well. And finally, this second dot here is your decay. This is how long it takes after you first press the key while you're holding it for that note to die down a little bit. But you'll notice I can't drag this dot down at all. I can just drag it left or right, which isn't really helpful at all. This isn't changing anything. This really messed with me when I opened this up. I thought maybe there was a glitch or something or something I was missing. It was something I was missing. I had to go watch Clev Grand's videos on this topic. It turns out to change the sustain, that is the volume that it drops to after you first press it down, you have to grab it by this portion of the bar here and drag it down and that'll do it. That wasn't super clear to me when I opened this up. Hopefully that helps you. I'm gonna drag this down here. Take a listen to how it drops down to that volume after I press the key. You can hear it starts louder and then drops. We can make it even more extreme. So that is the gain envelope. We have an envelope for each of these four settings. Uh, gain is the actual volume of the synthesizer. Pitch is the tuning of that note. You can make the note start higher and then land on the pitch you played, or start lower and land there, or any combination of those. Let's reset our gain back to the default here. We're gonna jump over to the pitch section, and we're gonna play with the pitch modulation. Now I can set the attack here, and we should hear the pitch curve into the attack nothing sounds different, that's because I also need to adjust the weight of this envelope. That is how much this envelope is affecting the pitch. If I pull it down, we'll hear the note start low and then resolve into the note I played. We can make that take longer by lengthening the attack. Or a really short time. And we could do the same with the release. Something interesting to note, remember we have no release on our gain right now. It just stops. If I increase the release on the pitch, it'll actually force the gain to increase its release as well. It just kind of pushes it back. That sounds really cool. <laughs> Similarly, I can make the weight positive to make it start higher and drop into this note. I'm going to increase the attack so we can really hear that. So that's the pitch envelope. I could do the same thing with dynamics. I'm going to add just a little bit of attack here to the gain, but most of the, most of the attack difference will be in this dynamics section. 
Again, we have a weight setting. So I'm going to drag the weight up, meaning it's going to get larger and richer as this envelope comes in. It's a subtle difference, but you can hear it there. I can also make it get softer. Uh, not quite softer in volume, but softer in this dynamics control that they have. Again, we have control over the release time as well. Uh, something to note, only the gain section has a decay setting. Everything else just has attack and release. And finally, we have a vowel envelope. This one's really interesting. You can get some very human sounding effects out of this between the attack, release, and weight settings. So I'm gonna pull the weight down, give it a really long attack. Let's see what happens. We can make it go the other way as well. Now remember, these sliders up here are your starting point. If I pull this vowel all the way down and the weight all the way up, it's going to go from completely ooh, closed vowel to wah, big open vowel. That's pretty cool. Now let's move over to the LFO settings. Uh, like I said before, there are four LFOs, one for each of these settings. That wasn't super clear to me at the beginning, but if you notice, as I switch between these, the colors change to match whichever section I have selected, and also the actual settings change. So if I change something in the range here, go somewhere else, and then come back, that range setting stays. So these are particular to whichever envelope you've chosen at the moment. I'm going to turn all of these down. Let's try adding a little bit of LFO to the pitch. This will kind of result in just a vibrato sound, right? <laughs> this is the range, which is how far the pitch is going to go up and down. The rate will be how fast that happens. And we can use an LFO on any of these settings. Uh, let's put it on the vowel instead. That, that'll be weird. Let's put the vowel right in the middle. Have no envelope effect anymore, uh, but just a ton of LFO. That's interesting. Almost sounds like an organ going through a Leslie, a rotary speaker. So with these LFO settings and the envelope, you can get some very human sounds. If you think about the way a human speaks or sings, there's a little bit of attack, a little bit of decay. We might scoop up into the sound a little bit. So I'll pull the pitch down into the note with a little bit of attack. The note's going to get richer as it goes. Maybe the vowel shifts just slightly over the course of the note. That's really weird. I like it. <laughs> Let's jump over to the reverb and room settings. Uh, these are both just different reverbs. Room is a more subtle, smaller room sounding reverb. Uh, let's try the regular reverb first. This is just the normal setting. And you can widen the reverb sound. Or make it completely mono. And the size sets how large the room you're simulating is. Uh, from a really big like cathedral to something much smaller. Now room is a lot more subtle. Uh, this is more about the early reflections, the, the really short, barely perceptible sounds of a room. Each of these have a bunch of different settings. Uh, there isn't a ton of variation between them, but it's a nice thing to mix into your sound a little bit. Let's 
jump over to the setup section. Uh, and here we have control one, which can be mapped to any MIDI setting, uh, control two as well. We can set the range of the pitch bend, which I usually like to just set to two half steps. And then we can add legato, uh, which turns this into like a solo lead instrument, which is really interesting. Check this out. I'm gonna add just a little bit of pitch glide. I turned on legato. You can hear it becomes this, this very human sounding lead. Let's say we add a pitch LFO here, but instead of turning up the range here, I'm just gonna turn up control one mod. Remember from our setup, control one is the mod wheel. Uh, this guy here. So now as I turn that up, as I play, now I have an extra layer of expression. Check it out. That's really cool. We also have a mod button next to several of these. Uh, this is where you can map how much either the velocity, how hard you hit the note, uh, or control one or control two affect these settings. Uh, so I can actually map control one to my vowel. Now if I turn this down from the LFO, it's just affecting the vowel now. And we're gonna turn the vowel all the way down. So I have a lot of room to grow with it. Now I have total control over the vowel. So that's a quick overview of PIPA. Obviously there's infinite combinations of how you can set up these envelopes, LFOs, along with your other controllers. Uh, there's an incredible amount of depth here to this instrument. And they give you a lot of fun presets here to play with to give you just ideas and starting points. So I'm gonna play around for a moment and make just a short little track probably just like a eight bar loop playing around with pipa uh, as some different instruments as a bass, a pad, a lead. Um, I don't think I'll try to do drums with this, but I bet you could. I'm going to start from the plain oscillator for each of these. And I'm going to try to make a fun bass sound. Uh, we'll go with multiple voices, dubbing pan and widen it out a little bit. And the first thing I want to start with is the envelope for the gain. Uh, I want this to be a real staccato bass sound, so it's going to die out right after I play. Just like that. Let's cut the reverb out of here. And I want the vowel sound to really just shift over the course of this. So let's try shifting it upward. I actually want it to go the other way. I want it to close down. So I'm going to shift the vowel starting point all the way up and the weight all the way down. Let's have the dynamics kind of shift over the course of this as well. And finally, we're gonna add a really dramatic drop in pitch from a very high pitch. This is how you would create like an 808 bass uh, in any other synthesizer. You have it have a really, really quick attack from an incredibly high pitch. So it just goes right at the beginning of the synthesizer. and it adds a ton of attack to the sound. It's a really cool trick. Let's have just a little bit of room. This is gonna kind of increase some of the low frequencies, some of the, the body of this sound. Cool, that is a fun bass sound, I like that. Let's get a few more tracks in here and we'll say we're gonna have a pad. Uh, let's say, I wanna see if I can make like a funky clav sound as well. Uh, and then finally a lead. Let's just put Pipa on all of those. And now we're gonna need a nice pad. Let's put the vowels right in the middle for this. Dynamics as well. This will be very airy, 
Not quite as much body. Nice long attack and decay. Really long vowel attack. Lots of reverb. I'm just guessing at these settings right now. And a little bit of pitch LFO. I truly have no idea what this is going to sound like. Oh, definitely set to voices. Multiple. Uh, a lot of randomness and fluctuation. And let's just see where this takes us. Okay, that's nice. Uh, I kind of don't like how wide that vowel's getting. We're going to make it a little more subtle. Keep those dynamics a little bit lower, I think. And just kind of chill out the LFO on that pitch. I want it to be a lot more subtle. Cool. This definitely needs to be a lot wider sounding. Nice. I'm going to restrict this to just female voices. Cool. All right, that's a good starting point for a pad. Let's try something funky. I am using the bass sound as kind of a starting point. Cool. That pitch envelope trick I did is way too extreme for this. That's fun. I wonder what it would sound like if we took just the male voices shifted into this higher register. That's fun. I like that. And finally, a nice lead. Let's go back to our default setting for this. And we're going to start just by putting this right into legato mode. Cool. That sounds good. Let's just add a lot of vowel automation to this. Cool. I don't need that much release, though. Oh, I want to set my pitch bend range a lot lower, and we are going to have mod wheel affect the pitch like we did earlier, but a lot faster. Cool. I think I'd like shorter envelopes for this just a little bit in general. And finally, let's have mod affect the vowel just a little bit. Cool. Just to add a little extra layer of expression to this. I'm going to add just a bit of width. I don't want this as wide as the other effects. And I actually do want it just a solo voice, I think. Cool. I like that a lot. Let's do something with these sounds. Uh, I want just a nice drum loop. We're going to use splice for this. And I'm just going to grab a random drum loop here. Yeah, I kind of like this one. Let's have this pad play these chords. Clav groove going. Double this out so we have some room to play with the lead. And try a little solo over this. So that's Clev Grand Pipa. Super cool, super weird synthesizer. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I think this would be useful in a lot of genres, especially video game soundtracks. I feel like that's always a great place to make use of different interesting sounds like this. Uh, I think 
just about any electronic form of music would be great for this, but especially that comes to mind for some reason. It is a lot of fun to play with, and it's only like 25 bucks right now. Uh, it's on sale through January 5th. Uh, after that, the price goes up a little bit. It's a really cool synthesizer. I do recommend checking it out. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to go check it out. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one, along with music production tutorials and all kinds of other stuff I have planned for this channel. If you have any questions about PIPA or anything else related to music production, leave it in the comments down below and I'll get back to you either there or in a future video. And of course, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.